Husky making hits. hits, hits. to let's talk about it well, we're gonna talk about it talk you know like taco tuesday yeah, uh, yeah. well it is 420 so you know i got the munchies <laughs> <Shut up>. <laughs> <laughs> no he doesn't <laughs> yeah but um now welcome back to the podcast um we want to express our gratitude and just you know, thank you so much for the support and the love that you guys have shown us thus far. And uh, it means a lot to us. And as we're going to continue to progress, you know, moving forward, you know, it'll help out, you know, a lot. So thank you. Yeah, and for all of your feedback as well. I feel like obviously our first episode, um, you, c- you could tell it was our first episode, but um, you guys give a lot of feedback of what you liked, what we could do better. And it kind of aligned what what we thought as well yeah um so it was kind of like confirmation of like okay like for sure we gotta you know fix this do that look at the camera <laughs> yeah uh, look at the camera speak up you know i'm not even gonna blink <laughs> we're just gonna stare at you thank you for all of your questions too in our in our q a yeah um so yeah we're gonna kind of go over those right now our first one being the most <laughs> requested and i wonder why is yeah. how we met um and i kind of thought it'd be cool if we both said like our own perspective of that night since things were obviously a little bit different leading up to the point that we met mm. so um really take it away <laughs> take it away <laughs> <laughs> okay Penya. but um yeah just it was 2019 october 2019 a group of my friends there's about 12 of us that we went to go visit um, LA, you know, for one of my best friends, Axel. Axel. His birthday. And um, yeah, we decided to go to Los Angeles um, for a long weekend. And that Friday that we went out, we decided to go out to Chinatown to this place called Treehouse. Yeah, it was Latin night. And my best friend, Agba, Agbizi, he kind of was opposed to it, you know, but he, he compromised with us, you know. You know he, he took one for the team, you know, just the, for us to go Nigerian to. The Nigerian prince. The Nigerian scammer, yeah. But, uh, bueno. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, so we went, and, yeah, the, the spot, it was, it was lit, it was bumping, and there was a lot of people, it was packed, so we go, and... Yeah, like, throughout the night, just, you know, the guys are kind of, you know, spread out throughout the, the spot. And it was about, like, 1 a.m. that night, and I see a group of girls. There's about, like, like what, four or five of you? Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, I see the tallest one there. You know, I like tall girls. That's my preference. But um, this, there's this chick wearing this Pocahontas outfit, you know. Because it was Halloween themed, I guess, but yeah, she decided, you know, to stand out and uh, wear this seductive and lovely. I'm different, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pocahontas, you know, outfit. So yeah, it was like two of my friends and I um, going to approach her and her friends. And it's always, you know, when it comes to guys approaching girls, it's always, you know, Who's gonna be that guy to approach, you know, out of the the group? Never take, you know, when a girl rejects you or says, you know, no to you personally because it could be for a multitude of reasons. You know, she could be tired or she could just be there for her friends or she could legitimately have a boyfriend, you know. Yeah, like I, yeah, I've been single for many years and I, that was my go-to excuse. <laughs> I think it's like the one that like hurts the least almost yeah. like oh sorry like not sorry but you don't know if my boyfriend's here or not so like back up you know 
Yeah, so you never know. So it's like, if a girl just tells you no, it's, it's no big deal. Just go on to the next girl. So you miss 100% of the shots that you don't take. But So I go up to this girl. <laughs> you know, I, like, reach out my hand to her, but, like, in an angle where she can't really see my face. But her friends can. I guess, yeah, her friends give the nod of approval. You know, shout out to your friends. <laughs> We start dancing and whatnot. And usually after the song is over, you know, a girl usually just walks away from you. And but now nah, she kept dancing with me, so we kept talking in between songs. And you know, I eventually asked for her number. I think she was like taken back by that because she was surprised. I guess she was expecting me to ask for her, like, like Instagram or Snapchat. I was like, dang, he's grown. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Yeah, so I asked for her number, and then she gave it to me. And uh, later that night, when my friends and I are dispersing, you know, trying to figure out what to do for the evening, I reached out to her, like, text her, hey, we should go grab some tacos. Ironically. <laughs> right? And, um, you know, she was with it. and But, like, as I was trying to figure out, you know, what my friends wanted to do, because I was a designated driver, um, I had... Yeah. I had that going on, but the night basically went on, and we just went, you know, back to um, our hotel, our Airbnb. I guess she called me, but um, I didn't pick up. Mm. <laughs> yeah, but I, I didn't save her number you right me. then and there. <laughs> but yeah, so that's mostly what our first encounter, from my perspective, looked like. So now I'm going to tell you guys what really happened because he was like sugarcoating it all. Huh? Huh? So yeah, it was funny because we actually weren't even supposed to go to that spot. But um, shout out to Atreve right there. Um, yeah. We were actually going to go out for like dinner or something for my best friend Brianna's birthday. And we were going to go to like the perch and have like a nice rooftop view or, you know, something chill. And I don't know what happened. We didn't end up doing that and one of the girls didn't even show up so it was like all right let's just i don't know let's go to atrevete that was like our go-to spot like that year more or less and yeah we got there and it was like since it was last minute we like put on accessories and there was like those were our so-called costumes so i just had like a brown two-piece on and i put a headband on and i was like well i guess i'm an indian now Okay, for then, yeah, I was like, <laughs> the thotty. <laughs> and then my friend put on, like, cat ears. The other one put on, I don't even know. It was, like, just literally accessories, but those were our costumes. So mm-hmm. we went, and we were, like, taking pictures. And um, as we're taking pictures, like, in the little photo booth area, it's kind of, like, near the entrance. So I just see, like, this tall man walk by, and I was, like, broke my neck nearly. Crack. And um, I was like, who? is that Billy. as like we're taking <laughs> our pictures my best friend's like yeah like that's all you like totally your type and i was like mm-hmm. then i don't know the night went on and i never saw him again we were like at the table and then we're like all right let's go to the dance floor um and dance and sure enough um, uh, about an hour or so later you know i i see my friends like doing this as i'm dancing with them and i'm like what's going on and then I see a hand and I like kind of see him through my peripheral and I'm like, is that who I think it is? And sure enough, it was. My friends were like, "Mm -hmm, mm -hmm." like, that's who you broke your neck for earlier. Like, please, yes, dance with him. And I was like, okay, okay, yeah, gladly. Uh, The night went on. We we danced a couple of songs and he was like, oh, yeah, like we have to go. And I was like, okay. I think we we left like shortly after, too. And um, yeah, he was like, oh, like, do you want to go get tacos or like something like to eat? And I was like, okay, yeah. And I think we... I ended up driving to the spot with my friends, but it was closed. So then I tried calling him to be like, hey, like the spot's closed that I just sent you. Like, it got forwarded to his voicemail and I was like, oh, sorry. I was like, OK, I guess not. And I remember literally being like, "Whoa, like maybe he has the aux. Maybe he's like playing his music in the car and like, you know, doesn't want to pick up the phone right now. My friends were like, are you serious? <laughs> I mean, yeah, DJ Belito. Yeah, so. I was like, well, you never know. Like, I feel like that would be why I wouldn't pick up or something. Yeah. But, yeah, I was like, all right, whatever. Like, never going to see this guy again. Like, he, li- he says he lives in, like, Boston or something. Like, whatever. 
And yeah, then our first date was two days later, and I was like, still kind of skeptical about it. Wow, okay, I really like this guy. Oh yeah, I really like you too, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Here we are. <laughs> Here we are. <laughs> well, yeah, that's our famous uh, how we met story. Yeah, infamous, famous, however you want to call it. Yeah. Yeah, so then our next question that we got asked was, has the pandemic strained our relationship? No. no. Next question. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> our pandemic literally, our pandemic, <laughs> our relationship <laughs> literally grew within the pandemic. I think not having the ability like to go out and like do all these things like really made us focus and like get to know each other really well and like mm-hmm. kind of go back to the root of like dates, like picnics and just chilling at home and just like the basic stuff. Like we didn't need to like go out really have a good time and whatnot and that really like brought us together yes yeah, as you guys can imagine a lot of movie nights you know a lot of binge watching yes. how she said a lot of you know picnics or walks in the park grabbing a lot of boba or ice cream <laughs> so but no i didn't really strain it but that's one thing i did notice like this past year i saw a lot of you know, either breakups or either pregnancies, you know, <laughs> it was either one or the other. Or both. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it actually brought us together. Our relationship actually grew stronger, I believe. Yeah, and I think that's, like, the base of, like, a healthy relationship, too, which is our third question, like, what to look for in a healthy relationship. I think just, like, having a really good foundation is really important, like, getting to know each other and not being distracted by everything else, like, really focusing on your partner and just enjoying life with them you know like the the little moments the big moments everything like goes hand in hand then it kind of goes hand in hand with our fourth question which is three things that make a relationship work is our communication has always been really good honesty honesty and the third one would be compromising because since the beginning we've literally communicated like everything with each other whether it was something that it was kind of hard for us to talk about or it was really easy and like no, like no big deal. You know, everybody has their past and things that they're kind of obviously like scared about like for the future or they're feeling like insecure about like either mm-hmm. or. It's really important to communicate those things to your partner. That way you guys, you know, the other person has an idea of things that they've been through already and you know are scared of repeating so you want to make sure that you communicate every single thing with your partner that transparency is really vital you have to explain you know and express how you're feeling you know at that very moment or if you want to kind of let it marinate for a moment before you know you say something out of anger or project you know some sort of emotion that you don't really you know mean at that precise moment i just tell her hey just i need a moment to myself before i can accurately display or express to you what i'm feeling you know in the most respectful manner that transparency and and honesty is is really uh necessary yeah because everybody's gonna have you know their off days so it's really important to communicate that to your partner so it doesn't become both of your off days or sometimes you're already both like in a mood but it's kind of like, you know, let's just give it each other our space or, you know, whatever is bothering them. That way we can, like, talk it through, avoid further complications down the road. Yeah, because when she's wearing her grumpy pants, I just try to, you know, be as well-mannered as possible or just, you know, give her her space or time you know, before I talk to her again. Usually five to seven business days. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think definitely females <laughs> will agree that we have our days where we're just not feeling it. We're just not feeling how we look. We're just not feeling our job, school, whatever it is. And it's it's not our partner's fault, but... It's life, yeah. Yeah, it's so. just life. And, you know, vice versa. Our partner's going to go through things and have their days. And you have to have that communication in order to really know that th- what the other person is feeling. Because I feel like we've already gotten to the point where... We already know. We'll just feel it if the other person's off. And even if we haven't seen each other like the whole day, we'll come home to each other or, you know, I'll come here. He goes to my house and it's kind of like, what's wrong? (laughs) Like we say hi and I'm like, what's wrong? And vice versa. So it's it's all about communication and just really getting to know your partner. As far as compromise. Yeah. Like there has to be a happy medium because. She's not going to agree 100% on what I think and vice versa. But we are two grown adults and we can meet 
in a point where we're both satisfied. Yeah, it can li- literally be anything as little as what movie to watch <laughs> or like what we want to do that day. And yeah, what to eat. It could be any decision. So Yeah, because sometimes those little things add up and it becomes like a bigger thing and it doesn't need to. That's what works for us, like those three things. Big question that we had too, um, well this one was for you specifically, was how is it dating someone who has a child? I have a child. <laughs> I knew you'd say it. <laughs> That's a valid question. If this question was asked to me several years ago, like five, six years ago, to be honest, I wouldn't pursue a long-term relationship with a woman who had a child. That's me being honest. And that comes with maturity. And just you just realize that if you're single, the older you get, the more likelihood you know you might find someone who has a child. And that's all right. You know, you have to love them for them and their child as well. I'm grateful I've developed, you know, a loving relationship with her and her daughter. And it's been amazing so far. Like, you know, her family treats me like I'm family. And that that comes with time as well. And vice versa. You know, yeah. Her family loves her. Yeah. (laughs) I didn't even tell him about my daughter, Chloe, um, on the first date. So he didn't even know, like, I was a mom. Until what a milf. Uh, shut up. Until like a month later. Like no, it was like two weeks, I think. Yeah, I was gonna say because we would FaceTime since he was in Boston. Obviously, we couldn't go out on dates anymore, so we'd have FaceTime dates. But yeah, yeah, it was like like two to three weeks later, where I was like, okay, I have a feel for him and who he is, and it wasn't like one of those things that's like, oh, I met this person and. You go on one date and it's like mm, that didn't work out like yeah. i don't know i just felt like i wanted him to to get to know me for me being a mom is a huge part of my life but i don't know like for some reason i just felt like mm, like people can be weird i wasn't really sure to begin with because he was all the way in boston so i was like oh, i'm never gonna see this guy ever again and <laughs> there he is living in la yeah. um, the other question that i had for they had for me was um how was the transition from being a single mother into you know being in a relationship and introducing my child to my my boyfriend and um it was definitely several months since like we were dating um that i decided to introduce chloe to you just because i just felt i don't know we needed to give each other time before like that's a really big step and i know some parents you know agree disagree but for me it was a really big step because I'm like, okay, if this person is going to, you know, eventually be a really big part of my life, I want to, like, make sure of that before I introduce him to Chloe because she's the biggest part of my life right now, you know, and always. But she's only four, about to be five. So it's, like, a really young age still. And I had never dated anyone, like, seriously after her like that. So it's kind of like, I don't know what to do. I'm just going to give it time and let's see how it goes. Our other question would be, when were we 100% comfortable with each other? 100%? <laughs> Haven't even revealed Day my one. final form. You know? <laughs> I'm still at 25%. <laughs> oh my gosh, okay. <laughs> but yeah, there was a time where she lived here for two weeks to follow protocol, you know, for her job, you know, with the pandemic. The corona. Yeah. Um, and I believe that's that was another stage where we grew more comfortable mm-hmm. with each other. After a year, we really got uh, really comfortable with each other, you know, like not just, you know, physically, but just being able to express how we feel and what we think to each other. Yeah, I agree. I think like during those two weeks, even though we virtually see each other every day, <laughs> yeah. almost, I think just being here all the time and. I don't know, just seeing each other every single day from the time he got home and I was just already here and <laughs> chilling. It just made us feel like we already were like living together, you know, like it kind of gave me like taste of like the future and you know what it would be like. Um, future <laughs> Future Hendrix. You can't. So I think yeah, that's where we got most comfortable as well. So I would say yeah, about a little bit over a year. Yeah. And obviously you moved here in October, so. Oh, I did. Okay. But anywho. <laughs> and then, the last question you guys had for us was, "What are life goals and accomplishments?" We believe 
you know, in marriage. So that's definitely in our list. We're not just dating, just a date. You know, there has to be some end result. That's definitely in our in our plans. You know, God willing, we'll be able to achieve that. Buy a house as well. I we also want to wanna, like grow and expand our podcast and yeah. just our platform. But overall, honestly, just enjoy life together. Like that's our biggest day to day goal. Yeah. Enjoy every moment that we can, whether it's traveling to different places, experiencing new things together, just seeing what life has to offer and enjoying it to the fullest. Yeah, I think that's our overall goal, obviously, besides getting married and purchasing our first home together and, and things like that is just, you know, enjoying life. Yeah, to the fullest. Life is good. Shout out to Drake and Future. <laughs> and then we had um, our question of the week for this episode, which is, does taste in music matter in a relationship? And I think we both agree. Yes. Yes. Not entirely, but I think overall, definitely, there should be like a common ground. And for us, for example, it's pretty much more or less the same, but mm -hmm. he listens to like a little bit more like Afro beats. I listen to like Michael Wadon. Thanks. Shout out to Cuban. So I think for the most part, we have like the same tastes, English and Spanish, but mm -hmm. we just, you know, have some things that are like slightly different or that we still enjoy listening, but we kind of like introduced each other to them. And I think that's the cool part about some uh, liking and dating someone that has slightly different taste in music because they get to like put you on to like new music. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just having like completely different taste in music, I think that's kind of weird. Yeah, like there has to be a similarity when it comes to taste in music. You know, we both love reggaeton, you know, salsa, bachata, merengue, R&B, you know, either throwback R&B or contemporary, you know, modern R&B. You know, rap, obviously, uh, I'll listen to more rap than she does, but, but yeah, it'll be really difficult, you know, being in a relationship with someone who has a completely different taste of music. You know, if I like, you know, R&B and she likes country, you know. I mean, it can work, but if I happen to, like, hate what he listens to, then I think that's where the problem would be. It's, I can't really see myself spending time with someone and they're playing music like in the car you know wherever and i'm just like i can't stand this. like give me the ox all right. yeah <laughs> yeah i think that would be really weird yeah so yeah i think we both agree that yeah it does matter indeed <laughs> dot com sponsor <laughs> <laughs> but yeah that transitions to another topic that we had in mind which is our personal songs of the month so uh, on the latin side we both actually came to uh, the same conclusion <laughs> for both of us yeah for both actually english and spanish yeah for for the latin side it was jay cortez uh christian dior 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 <laughs> and then for the english side um it's leave the door open by bruno mars and anderson park yeah, that song is so catchy. And it gives you like that old like vibe, you know, like you feel like our parents listened to this back in the day or something. Yeah, because with that Grammy performance that they did with that song, like it was it was an amazing performance and what they were wearing, like it seemed like they were in the seventies or yeah. or eighties, you know. But Christian Dior, it just it slaps. Like it, it's a banger to be honest. Huh? It slaps. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But it's funny because you like look at the music from like now and then like back in the day and fun fact <laughs> back in is it really fun or? it's fun to me <laughs> um <laughs> back in 2002 um the number one song on this day was actually ashanti foolish which still like slaps to this day to this day to this day so it's like cool how I think like this generation and I guess like every other generation, like we kind of have like our throwbacks yeah. that you still love singing to, even if it was like however years ago. Yeah, that's the thing about music. It's timeless. Like it, it doesn't have an expiration date. Yeah. You know, it could be 20, 30 years have passed by and it'll still sound, you know, just as amazing as the first time as you've listened to it. Yeah. So 
She also had Always on Time. The, that yeah. song was a banger, too. It was too. actually number two. She had the number one and the number two spot. Um, I think she actually had, if I'm not mistaken, like about three uh, songs like simultaneously on like the top 10 or top 100 in Billboard, which I think she was the first one to do that like after the Beatles. So that was really cool. I got more slaps than the Beatles. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. It's funny because when you mention Ashanti, like with Ja Rule, I remember J-Lo, and she had that song. And she stole Ashanti's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she had a song with Ja Rule. And um, another fun fact, bonus fun fact. So many fun facts. Today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, Ashanti, you know, wrote, you know, all her lyrics. And she even wrote for J-Lo as well. Yeah. So. And sang for her. Yeah, right. <laughs> no, no, they kind of, yeah. yeah, they sound similar. But no, there's like a song, I can't remember it off the tip of my tongue right now, where I'm like, that's not J-Lo, that's literally Ashanti. Yeah. I'm like, if you guys know what that song is, go ahead and comment what it is, because that's going to bother me. <laughs> yeah, like, it's on the tip of the, your tongue. Yeah, but. And Ashanti and J-Lo, they've, they've both, like, aged so gracefully. Like, fine wine, but mostly Ashanti. It is Ashanti, right? Ashanti or Ashanti? Ashanti. Oh, <laughs> yeah, and I, I believe, yeah, they both have aged, you know, beautifully, but Ashanti has, you know, I think it's taken it. To the next level. You haven't even seen my final form yet. Like <laughs> <laughs> For the taco spot that we had, it was Los Gringos. Locos. <laughs> in La Cañada it's by where where I work I actually know the owner he's really cool but they have like Margarita Mondays and like Taco Tuesdays and they have really cool specials and like table side guac I think is what they call it which is like really good guac is extra but yeah we'll show you guys a little bit more about our spot we didn't forget the tacos today so shout out to us <laughs> yeah with that being said, thank you so much, guys, for joining us. And we've officially become those jerks who say rate, comment, and subscribe. Rate? <laughs> this is how you know we're new. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. If you want to do it, you know, just do it. If you don't, then whatever. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> we're like, thanks for watching, regardless. Yeah. Nah, but sincerely, thank you so much, you know, for the support and love and you know, on to the next episode. Bye. God bless. Bye. No, but yeah, and thank you for all of you. Thank you for all of your questions too and our and our